The Roblox community is currently gearing up for the Classic, an old school Roblox themed event that has players more excited than ever before. The hype is unreal with some speculating it could be the greatest event ever, but what you may not know is that none of this should be happening. In 2019, Roblox had a plan that would have wiped out all future events including the Classic, the Hunt, and everything in between. What Roblox announced was so idiotic that people thought it was an April Fool's joke, but sadly for us, they believed it to be the future. Five years after they dropped one of their worst updates ever, let's take a look back at the Roblox event killer, LiveOps. Uh, Roblox removed events. I personally think this is an awful idea. They're not going to be giving away prizes anymore. I'm sure a lot of people probably, probably are kind of sad right now. It was Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019, another typical and unsuspecting day for Roblox and its users. Hype was building for Egg Hunt 2019 as it was set to release in two weeks, although at that point everyone knew it'd be a dev hunt. Nevertheless, excitement for an event was at its peak as it was every year when the annual Egg Hunt was nearing its release. The hype was there despite the disappointing fact that it was a dev hunt, but nobody was prepared for the disappointment that come next. At 9.48 am, Roblox randomly dropped a dev forum post titled Roblox 2019 Events Update in which they announced LiveOps. Hello developers, as the Roblox platform continues to grow, we are continuously evolving ways to help promote our developer community. At the end of 2018, we announced we would find new ways to promote community-driven content. Starting on May 13th, 2019, Roblox will begin highlighting developer daily LiveOps events. What is LiveOps? LiveOps encourages developers to promote new features, content, outfits, characters, and maps, spotlight current features in your game, run special in-game promotions to attract new players. More importantly, it may help you grow and retain your user base. LiveOps may help you to drive new active users to your game and potentially increase monetization by boosting users' playtime. You'll have an opportunity to be featured on our daily LiveOps page for 24 hours. This live ops feature helping promote games on a platform with notably bad game discovery sounded promising at first. It appeared that Roblox would create an additional new page for players to visit that would showcase new games, their updates, and in-game events on a daily basis. It'd be the central hub showing a random assortment of popular games each day which sounded like something that'd be super popular among both devs and players. Instead, Roblox turned this developer event focus page into the worst and most damaging update of its time. Hidden in the additional information section of the post were two daggers that inflict serious pain upon the Roblox community. The first was that Roblox would be unable to provide catalog prizes for these community-driven events. None of the in-game events or updates featured on this page would be allowed to give anything out via Roblox's prize-giving tools. That was somewhat of a blow, but what made matters worse was the last point they conveniently put all the way at the bottom. The Live Ops page was set to replace their current monthly events. Roblox had just announced a cancellation of monthly events, a program that had been running for several years leading up to that point. Every month, Roblox would host a smaller event separate from their seasonal events, and sadly, those smaller events were set to end. Roblox was prepared to replace events that gave prizes with a page that promote in-game updates that didn't give prizes, which didn't sit well with users. Eight previously planned monthly events were instantly scrapped, but there was still hope that seasonal events like egg hunts would be safe. The community revolted against the update for days before Roblox dropped an even worse change arriving with Live Ops. On April 8th, six days after the original announcement, Roblox quietly updated the post to clarify that seasonal events would also be replaced by live ops. This meant that not only the smaller monthly events were done for, but also all future egg hunts, Bloxtobers, and other holiday and season themed events. Roblox's sneaky edit went unnoticed for about a day before people realized what was really gonna happen. The outrage was at levels rarely seen before as nearly everybody banded together to protest live ops and the cancellation of events. Immediately people began panning it as possibly the worst update of all time and something with next to no positives for anyone involved. Roblox went silent following their clarification on total event removal, leaving users to hopelessly count the days towards the dreaded arrival of live ops in one month's time.
11 days after Roblox's announcement, EggHunt 2019 scrambled in time began and was quickly recognized as a colossal disaster. Players went into it knowing it'd probably be the last event ever given Roblox's event cancellation, so players really hoped for the best. They got far from the best and instead we got what was unanimously, at the time, the worst egg hunt ever. It was an oddly somber time as we all just sat there and watched time go by knowing that this was the end of events. And unfortunately, instead of going out with a celebration of everything that led up to that point, we went out with a whimper. Unfortunately, EggHunt 2019 wasn't the only event related thing that wasn't running smoothly because LiveOps was a mess too. Leading up to its release, Roblox opened up a LiveOps application where devs could submit their games and events to be on the new page. Roblox announced multiple changes to it only 22 days after simply announcing it, including it now featuring games on a weekly basis rather than a daily one. The release date was also pushed back 3 days from Monday, May 13th to Thursday, May 16th. Although these changes were nothing crazy, they were a hidden red flag showing how messy LiveOps would become. Four days prior to its release, we got our first bit of info about what the first games to be promoted on the page would be. The owner of Koala Cafe proudly posted on the group Discord server that Roblox notified them that they'd be on the LiveOps page from May 16th to May 23rd. It was somewhat odd that Roblox had only messaged them four days before the massive update was set to release, which ended up being yet another red flag. Acon 2019 would end the next day, then just a few short days later, the dreaded live ops release day would arrive. The downfall of live ops began on May 16th, 2019, the day it was released. Live ops opened up under the name Developer Events and could be accessed from where the Events tab formerly was. Notoriety, Koala Cafe, or Tycoon 2, Floppy Fighters, and Speed Simulator X were the first games to ever be featured on the page. Each of these games were set to host their own in-game event lacking any avatar prizes for a week. I chose to keep an eye on one of the games to see how it performed and I chose Koala Cafe, which interestingly enough was a mess. Koala Cafe hosted a hiring week in which they'd be hiring a bunch of employees for their cafe. All they really did though was add a chat command that sent you to their quiz center where you do the, some basic quiz so a bot could rank you in their group. Oddly enough, Roblox's live ops page description said they were adding new ice cream flavors rather than this whole hiring week facade. Roblox didn't even know what Koala Cafe was doing, which was yet another early red flag that this was going to fail. Perhaps the largest red flag would be the increase in players Koala Cafe saw because it was not up to par with events. The game only saw a rise of about 50 to 200 players at any given time despite being one of the first 5 games promoted on what was a massive update. Typically, events would boost the game's concurrent players by thousands, especially early on, but LiveOps couldn't even get a third of that. Following Koala Cafe's original inclusion on LiveOps, they did not receive any noticeable increase with their player counts. The whole point of LiveOps was to better promote games and retain players, but it was immediately evident that wasn't the case. Everyone knew what LiveOps was, yet there was so little interest in it that games couldn't even get a boost of a few hundred players. A feature that was supposed to change Roblox for the good was quickly identified as an extreme failure, and things only continued to get worse from there. By week 3 of developer events, two noticeable very early changes had occurred that once again raised some eyebrows. LiveOps was swiftly rebranded from developer events to this week on Roblox after only the first week. This felt like a desperate move from Roblox to spark more user interest after week 1 failed to generate adequate amounts of new players. Then, instead of promoting 5 games like in weeks 1 and 2, Roblox only selected 3 games, Pinewood Space Shuttle Advantage, Infinity RPG, and Agents. Although it again didn't seem like much, it may have been a predecessor to Roblox's eventual struggles to find games to promote. You see, developers had to apply to be featured on the LiveOps page, which meant that Roblox had to choose from those applications. Evidently, they didn't have much to choose from as they made some terrible choices, including a game that could be considered a condo game. LiveOps was dead by week 7, but tons of people were still interested in seeing how bad the event killer would do, and this week started giving them what they wanted. 
First off, Agents got featured again for the second time in 5 weeks, once again showing that Roblox might have been struggling to get applications. But secondly and more notably, a game called State View Prison Roleplay was featured and it caused a ton of controversy. This game was known to be heavily botted months prior and apparently the owner was a noted scammer, but they featured the game anyway. People would call this out, leading to Roblox removing the game from the page and deleting the game, group, and owner altogether. Roblox accepting and promoting a game known to violate their own TOS was a massive blunder that you'd think they'd take seriously. Instead, Roblox managed to make things even worse in the following week. Week 8 saw a record high 6 games get promoted, but only 4 of them would survive. Roblox in high school was originally featured but was randomly removed for unknown reasons, marking it the second game to be removed from Live Ops. The third game came in the same week when a stolen version of Boys and Girls Dance Club was featured and it caused a ton of chaos. It was owned by someone called Challengings who had stolen other games including Speed Simulator which had its real version featured before. Aside from simply existing, the stolen game broke several rules including some serious violations that end up getting the game and owner banned. It featured scam game passes that promised things like luxury cars that were nowhere to be found after being purchased. And then, worst of all, the game featured multiple suggestive and naked morphs that were easily found in the morph room at spawn. A borderline condo game that was stolen and featured scams was promoted by Roblox on a feature they thought would be better than events. Now, it's possible the naked morphs and scams were added after Roblox approved it, but the game was still stolen which should have made it ineligible. Challenging stolen boys and girls dance club would be featured on this week on Roblox for 3 or 4 days before being taken down. Thankfully, by this point, Live Ops was already long dead, and the only people interested in it were people preying on its downfall. Everyone wanted events back, and judging by all of Roblox's shortcomings and failures with this, we knew it would happen eventually. Live Ops was dead upon release, and all of these poor game choices and lack of visit boosts gave us hope that they would revert the update. Roblox tried everything to get it going, from promoting more games, to promoting less games, to adding games on a daily basis, but nothing could save it. Live Ops was at the point where it caused next to no effect on player counts at all, aside from maybe giving a game under 10 bonus players. Everybody knew it was dead, but Roblox held hope, including in late August when they opened up applications all the way to February 2020. It wouldn't live to see that day though, as Roblox would pull the plug on it only 82 days after opening their second round of applications. On November 13th, 2019, Roblox released an update on LiveOps on the dev forums, finally announcing its long-awaited cancellation. Only 181 days after the event killer released, Roblox fully realized their mistake and put an end to their biggest failure ever. The announcement brought great joy to most of the community as it gave us some hope that we'd see events back. Roblox claimed Live Ops would return in 2022, but many including myself assumed that'd be another false promise, and it was. It'd be mentioned sparsely at an RDC and in private discords by staff, but it thankfully never returned. A final week of Live Ops would occur with only 3 games featured before closing down for good. Live Ops was an absolute disaster that saw 8 previously planned events get cancelled and likely even more that we didn't hear of. The only non-catalog event that happened during Live Ops' lifetime was RP Battle Season 1, an event run and organized by community members. We'd have to wait until February 19th, 2020 for events to return when the 7th annual Bloxy Awards event game opened to the public. It took close to a year for them to get things back on track after releasing what was, at the time, the worst Roblox update ever. Live Ops's colossal failure begs the question, what if Roblox never cancelled this week on Roblox? What if events were still cancelled and we instead had Live Ops slash developer events slash this week on Roblox slash whatever Roblox would be calling it? We would have never had Acon 2020, Metaverse Champions, The Hunts, or the upcoming The Classic event. We wouldn't have even had sponsored events like the Lil Nas X concert because Roblox instead did catalog events where a few brand items would release for free. We wouldn't have had anything event wise for the past 5 years had Roblox never given up on the Live Ops feature. 
Maybe in some alternate universe the classic doesn't exist and we've instead just been playing our favorite games without anything else going on. Thankfully we will never know what that's like because Roblox recognized their failure and put an end to the event killing update.